Hi, I'm Gemma Smith, Professor and Academic Clinic Director at the University of Windsor's Faculty of Law. I work with our clinic students to support their clinical learning experiences. This video introduces you to one of the foundational teaching and learning concepts in clinical legal education, reflective practice. In this video, I give some basic definitions and approaches to reflective practice. You'll also hear from some of our former clinic students. They will provide their own definitions and give some examples of reflective practice. This is a broad topic and we only scratch the surface here, so let's get started. Throughout your clinic experience, you will be asked to reflect. The concept of reflection has only just begun to take hold in legal education, although clinicians have worked with this concept for decades. As you will discover, clinics provide a wealth of opportunity for ethical and professional experimentation, including significant chances to make mistakes. This is an ideal environment to begin developing professional identities. It's also an opportunity to work with and challenge the practice of law as it is experienced by real people. As former clinic student Chris Rudnicki notes, I think there's just a, a wide gap between what the law says and what happens in people's real lives. Um, the law says you can't be strip searched, but lots of clients are routinely strip searched anyway with no remedy. So what is reflection? David Bood and his co-authors are some of the more commonly quoted theorists in this area. They define reflection as activities in which individuals explore their experiences to gain new understandings and appreciation. Bood's model is focused on individual learning experience, essentially self-reflection. He talks about reflection on experience, such as might occur in a journal. Reflection on your experience can be very helpful when trying to improve your practice. Clinic lawyer Jill Rogan describes her clinic experience and the importance of self-reflection. What stands out for me is, first of all, working in a legal setting with marginalized clients. Um, I just learned a ton about... Um, I guess I learned a ton in terms of reflecting self-reflection and um, the power differentials between the lawyer and the client and how to negotiate that and how to think about that, how to start thinking about it because it's not something that you should ever stop thinking about. Michelle Leering gives a comprehensive definition of reflective practice. Reflective practice describes the many ways that instrumental, critical, poetic and or contemplative reflection helps people make meaning and sense out of tacit knowledge, interactions, and experiences of their daily practice. Its aims may be to improve practice, to deepen personal understandings of values and ethics, and to better understand the workings of power in that daily practice. Former clinic student Ryan Fritsch demonstrates many of the goals of reflective practice in his statements. For me, uh, reflective practice is... Uh, it's about interrogating uh, my role as an advocate uh, and understanding my relationship to all the pieces and all the players in the system. Um, you know, every time I work with a client, I reflect on that practice. Uh, I'm asking, did I make uh, a good connection with this client? How could I have communicated better with the client? Uh, what did I not understand about where they're coming from? Uh, what do I need to know about uh, where that client's coming from to be a good advocate? Uh, if you're not engaging in that kind of self-reflective, self-critical uh, practice, you're not going to grow uh, as a lawyer. You will also hear the term critical reflection, which some of the former clinic students already demonstrated. How is critical reflection different from reflection? Critical reflection includes examination of individual client work, but also community-level, institutional, and systemic elements of how we engage with ourselves and the world. It goes beyond surface analysis to question underlying social, political, cultural, and economic patterns that often remain unexamined. Critical reflection also encourages students to critique deeply held assumptions. For example, someone may come to understand through experience that poverty is an individual's fault, and that one must simply work hard to succeed. Without critical reflection, this and other harmful attitudes can be perpetuated and, in fact, become more deeply ingrained. This often unconscious bias can negatively affect how lawyers represent their clients. Stephen Chemist writes that reflection is action-oriented, social, and political. Its product is praxis, informed, committed action, the most eloquent and socially significant form of human action. 
Solange Lossier talks about her clinic experience as instrumental in increasing her understanding of the systemic nature of poverty. I think LAW uh, gave me a, an awareness of what really was going on in the community and with different communities and different people and that there are underlying issues of, of poverty and, um, and that changes need to be, uh, that sometimes just resolving a legal file doesn't resolve the issue that the problem can be systemic and sometimes legislative changes are needed. Chris Rednicki demonstrates critical reflection on his clinic experience with one client and the bureaucratic hurdles in small claims court. As you will see, reflecting critically on the operation of the law in people's lives evokes emotion. Reflection can allow you to connect with and interrogate the affective or emotional responses to experience. Connecting to emotional as well as cognitive reactions will strengthen reflective practice. There's been administrative hurdle after administrative hurdle after administrative hurdle going again and again and again to the small claims clerks and every single time there's one tiny thing that's wrong with our form that, you know, we, that the, one would hope that the previous clerk would notice but didn't and then therefore we came back with the wrong thing. And so just being stonewalled by this sort of faceless bureaucracy has been an unbelievably frustrating experience both for us um, in terms of having to do a tremendous amount of work on this file and for our client because you know this person has a judgment the court the law has said you are owed money by this other person the other person's not cooperating and now there's nothing it's, or it seems to her that like, there's nothing we can do um, and so that's been a truly frustrating experience in the next video we'll consider why critical reflection is important and give ideas about how to start reflecting mm -hmm.